Hey, Pete here for Studio Live today. And then this GarageBand for iPhone quick tip, we're going to once again be looking at the brand new features we have in version 2.2 of GarageBand here on the iPhone. So in this fifth video in the series, we're gonna be taking a look at multi-take recording. Now, if you've used a DAW or a digital audio workstation on a Mac or a PC, you'd be very familiar with the concept of recording multiple takes. And what you can do with that is record the same performance two, three, four, five times to be able to ensure that you get the best possible performance. You can also do what's called comping, which is bringing together parts, components of each of those different takes to make one final master track. So if you do a really good opening for one track and then a really good ending um, for a different one, you can bring those together. Now that's not been possible on GarageBand for iPhone or iOS until right now. We have the brand new multi-take recording functionality. So I'm gonna show you how that works. But first of all, if you haven't done a lot of rec audio recording, the way that GarageBand has historically worked is that if you record a piece of audio, so in this one, I've got my guitar track up the top here, all my other tracks are, are muted at the moment. Um, and we've got the lead vocal down here. So if I recorded a vocal sound and then recorded again, what would happen is that that new recording would actually overwrite the original recording. So if I recorded one take and then went in and tried a second take of that same track, then I would actually overwrite my initial track. And that's uh, the way that it's been designed. What we now have is the option to do multi-take recording. So to access these, I've got my audio recorder set up here. If I tap on this one, which is our uh, plugins and EQ and track settings uh, slide out. Uh, if you're not sure what all of these do, check out the other video I have, which talks all about the plugins and EQ and the audio effects that we have here. But if we tap on track settings and hit the recording drop down here, you can see that I've got multi-take recording on. Now this is off by default, so you will need to come into the track settings for the track that you're using, tap that, turn it on, make it blue, and now we've got multi-track recording on. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to record a, a take, a vocal pass on this. Now to do this, I'm just gonna plug in a microphone, turn on the metronome. Actually, we don't need the metronome for this. We'll just hit record. If I had a dollar coin for every time you disappointed me, I'd have a fortune. So there we go, there's our first take, our first pass at that vocal line, and there it is. So you can see there's the intro lead in, there's the bit of the vocals that, we'd, that we've recorded. Now, as I said before, if we went ahead and weren't happy with that particular recording, we wanted to do it again and hit record, without multi-take recording on, we would just simply overwrite that piece of audio and we'd have a new piece of audio to work with there. With multi-take on, let's have a look at what happens. So let's do a second take of that particular vocal line. If I had a dollar coin for every time you disappointed me, I'd have a fortune. So there we go. Now I'll just unplug, because I don't need my microphone in anymore. So we'll have the sound coming out of the speaker of the iPhone again. So now you'll notice here that we've got a little number two next to the lead vocal. So it says two lead vocals, two takes. So if we continue to do more and more takes, we get number three, four, five, and so on. And it would say the lead vocal and then however many takes that we'd actually done. Now, if we want to do something with this, so if we want to actually start um, playing around with these takes, if we tap on the audio, tap again to select and hit the takes option there, what you'll see well, what you'll see when I fix that is that we have the two takes here. So we have the lead vocal, the number one, and the number two take. So if I hit number one and tap back out of here, you can see that we've now got the number one track there. If I tap again, hit takes, and hit number two, then we've got the number two track that's been selected. Now, what we can do, so I did mention comping before, so it's not as easy to do as it would be on, on a regular digital audio workstation, but we can actually split this take and then have particular sections from take one and take two. So 
If I come into here and we'll just hit play for a second. So that fortune that I hit there in the second take was very sharp. So I actually want to get rid of that because I think I did a better fortune in the first take. So if we wanted to do that, let's just find exactly where that audio is. Fortune. So it's that from that line onwards. Whoops, I've just moved my audio. Let's not do that. So if I bring my playhead to that point just before the fortune, I'm going to tap, tap again, hit split, and now slide down on that one. What you've noticed now is we've got two pieces of audio. Actually, don't do that. I'll just undo that. I've actually started sliding around that initial piece. Um, so we've got two pieces of audio there. Oh, I think I've broken that. Let's just undo back to there. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, I, I moved it around a little bit there and it made things a little bit different. So let's just get our brightness back. So with these two pieces of audio now, I've got both of them for take two back here we've got take two and take two what i actually want to do now is tap on this section hit takes and hit number one to put the first take back on there so now if we go back to the start of where the vocals kick in i had a dollar coin for every time you disappointed me i'd have a fortune and there you go. So what it's actually done is it's taken the first part of that audio and you did hear a little bit of a pop in there because it's basically the split in there is right between two. So if you were using this in sort of more professional recording environment, you'd probably put some little crossfades in there and fix that or you wouldn't actually comp it right in the middle there. You would actually push that a little bit further across. So I would have actually split it, say, there and made sure that it wasn't right on that break there. But what you can see there is that suddenly... We've got a really cool way of ensuring that we don't just have to do one take and one pass and then just do it again entirely. If it's wrong, we can we can pick and choose different takes and parts of different takes to actually comp, comp together the best performance uh, that we can possibly get. So a very cool new feature. Um, have a play with it. See what you think. It's uh, it's yeah, it really is revolutionizing the way that you're going to be able to record in GarageBand, especially for your audio recordings, your voice, your guitar, that sort of thing. So I hope you found this useful and enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.